Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. I'm Tova. Today I'm going to show you how to sew a ribbed neckline. Using ribbing or ribbed knit, you can create professional looking necklines, armholes, or cuffs for your t-shirts and sweatshirts. I'll show you how to calculate for band size and also how to sew it all together. To sew something professional doesn't mean it has to be hard. Let's go ahead and get started. To create our neckband, we're actually going to have to cut out a strip from our ribbed knit fabric. We need to calculate how big that strip is going to be. To do that, you're going to take your flexible tape measure and you're going to measure around the whole neckline using the flexible tape measure. So I'm doing the front and then I'm also doing the back. Take your length measurement. In my particular example, mine is 15 and a half inches. Now we need to make the neckband a little bit shorter than this to ensure that once it's sewn on, it's going to lay flat. So you're going to take your measurement, multiply it by 85% or 0.85. And that should give you a weird number. So I'm going to get like 13.175. Now we need to also include seam allowance into this length. So for my example, I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. I take that quarter inch, I multiply it by two, that gives me a half inch. So I'm gonna add it to my 13.175 plus a half inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna round it so it gives me something like 13 and 5 eighths. So that is going to be the length of my band. Next, I need to figure out what the width of the band is going to be. To determine this, you need to figure out how wide you want the finished band to be. So once the whole thing's finished, how wide do you want it? I'm gonna say for mine, I want it to be a half inch. So you're gonna take your desired width and you're gonna multiply it by two. So I end up with one inch. You also need to include your seam allowance. So again, I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna multiply it by two. If you do a half inch seam allowance, you also multiply it by two. But I'm doing a quarter inch. So I'm gonna take that one inch, I'm going to add half inch because that's one quarter inch times two and that's going to give me one and a half inches so this is going to be the width so then i'm going to cut out of my fabric 13 and 5 eighths by one and a half inches you're going to want to cut out your band a certain way from your fabric so this is my ribbed knit fabric right here and i have my selvage right here on the edge i'm going to measure one and a half inches going this way so when I measure my 13 and 5 eighths length, I'm going this way. This is to make sure, you can see my little ridges here of the ribbed, it's going parallel with the width of your fabric and going perpendicular to the length of my band. Take the two short ends of your neck band and you're going to bring them together. You can go ahead and put a pin here and we're gonna sew a seam. You're going to do a straight stitch at your seam allowance. So for me, that's gonna be the quarter inch. And you're just gonna make sure to do a back stitch at the beginning and end. Currently, your band should be sewn into a loop and it's wrong side out. You're now gonna take the length of it and you're gonna fold it in half. So you're bringing it wrong side to wrong side and you're gonna do this for the whole neck band and you're gonna pin it. Instead of keeping all of these pins in my folded neckband, I'm going to do a stitch on the edge just to hold the raw edges together. I'm going to switch my machine to a small zigzag stitch and I'm going to do this stitch right along the edge here. Again, we're just trying to hold these raw edges together and you're going to make sure to do it all the way around. If you have trouble sewing on the edge, what you can do is just slip a piece of tissue paper under your fabric and that should really help with that situation. And when you're finished sewing this, you can just rip the tissue paper off. Take your band and you're going to split it into fourths, marking each section with a straight pin. So I could put a pin here, put a pin here, put a pin in the center in the front and to put a pin in the center in the back. And then I do the same thing for the neckline. 
My shirt is right side out and now I'm going to pin each of these points with my shirt. So you're only pinning the four points. So I'm gonna match up these pins, put a pin to hold it, and then I'm gonna do the same with this side over here. You're not gonna pin in between because it doesn't matter since the band is a little bit smaller. So when we're at our machine, we're gonna have to stretch the neck band in order to fit that section. Sew your seam around the whole neckline. Now I'm starting at my first pin. You can go ahead and put in a couple of stitches, but before you get too far, you're gonna grab the section where your next pin is at. So I'm grabbing both the green and the band fabric, and I'm just gonna hold it here, and I'm going to stretch it just enough so that the band is actually long enough to fit my green fabric. I'm not trying to stretch it as far as it'll go because I don't wanna stretch the actual neckline of my shirt. I just wanna stretch the neck band so that it actually fits and it's actually gonna work as I'm sewing all the way around. After you finish stitching, you can go ahead, take your neck band and you're gonna press it up. I would go ahead and use your iron to press it. You wanna make sure that the seam allowance is going down towards the bottom of your shirt. Next, we're gonna take it to our machine to do a top stitch and you're gonna stitch right along the edge, attaching the seam allowance to the shirt and it's gonna make it look a lot neater. I'm sewing close to my seam line on the green side, not on the band. And you do not have to stretch your t-shirt as you're doing this. Again, don't stretch it. Just let it feed under the machine naturally. You can also use a twin needle if you want to do double stitches. Here's the completed neckband. Now for my top stitching, I used a white thread, but I definitely recommend using a matching color thread just so it looks a little bit neater. Again, instead of doing just one row of stitching, you can use the double needle and use two rows of stitching just so it looks a little bit more professional. Now this technique can be used not only on the neckline, but you can also use it on armholes and the bottom of sleeves. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.